Hi, Morgan and Adam. Now, this uh, video series uh, uses Hollywood celebrities and short films to educate the American public about the fundamentals of economics. How did the whole project come about? Yeah, the genesis of the project was uh, Paul Allen's production company, Vulcan Productions, got wind that I was developing a film around money, explaining how it has value, how that value changes, um, how it varies from country to country, and they said Paul's really interested in the economy and wanting to demystify the economy. So we got together and we cooked up this whole concept of We the Economy, 20 short films you can't afford to miss, where we have 20 A-list directors working with 10 brilliant economic minds to tell stories that we should all understand a little bit better and that we should all want to embrace. So can you each describe uh, the individual pieces that you worked on for the project? Well, my piece is about, uh, Adam, Adam oversaw a bunch of different films, so he was working as an advisor and as a consultant to a few different films. My film is kind of about the birth of the, of the market system, and so uh, we basically kind of go back to caveman times where John Steele Gordon, who is the, one of the advisors on We the Economy, he said to me, he goes, I imagine that in the beginning, you know, that it all started with two cavemen who said, uh, you know, one was a good hunter, one who made great spears, and one guy who said, uh, I, I would be an even better hunter if I had one of your spears. So they made the trade, and out of that was born kind of the first market system. So I was like, that's a great idea for a movie. So that was the, the inspiration for my film, Cavenomics. But Adam, in it, so he was one of the advisors on my film, but he oversaw and advised a bunch of different filmmakers. Yeah, and probably the most exciting thing for me was I got to co-write two of the films, because I've never done anything like that. I <laughs> normally do, you know, try and make them accessible, but very serious, fact-based economic uh, reporting. And I got to partner with Adam McKay and Chris Henchy and, and be the co-writer of two of them. And uh, one of them is um, about, uh, it's a cartoon about three sweet little alpacas who are played by Sarah Silverman, Amy Poehler, and Maya Rudolph, who basically are confronted with income inequality. And it was an awesome way to take this very important, complicated issue and uh, made my brain do things that it had never done before, but Adam McKay is such a genius that it was easy, um, turn it into a really fun cartoon with good jokes and, and a plot line and all of that. Um, with Chris Henchy, we took um, a, a fairly complex and subtle argument about how to properly measure the economy. Uh, what does GDP represent? Is GDP the right measure? And uh, Chris Henchy's great idea was to make it in the form of wrestlers, two wrestlers, and then turned out to be four wrestlers battling it out over how to measure GDP. And um, it, I think that was pretty much a, a model for how all these films worked, where you took incredibly creative minds um, and I don't want to say economics folks aren't creative, but let, let's just say a little more serious, a little more nerdy, <laughs> and and force us together. And you know, you, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate kind of moment where where we were able to create something that really couldn't have existed uh, in in any other way. So why is it that you think Americans are so economically illiterate? I think about this an awful lot. I think part of it is. If you look at most of the 20th century, our economy just functioned incredibly well. I mean, obviously, there was the Great Depression, there was the occasional recession, but overall, it really was the American century. We just had dramatic, healthy growth, sort of unprecedented in human history. And so we built all of our institutions, including our educational institutions, our media institutions, around this idea that, oh, the economy just works. It just functions well. It's not something you really have to worry too much about. The rest of the world knew that economics was, was a really important thing to understand. People used to know that before the American century, but I think we got a little lazy, and, and maybe we earned that laziness by having such a healthy, constantly growing economy. Obviously, our economy is not growing in the same way. It's not growing as healthily, and there's every reason to think um, that's a permanent change, that we're going to be dealing with economic volatility for the rest of our lives. So I think now is the time. This is a key moment for Americans to realize, hey, we have to understand this stuff. But what I love about this this uh, series is that we were able to not just say, okay, this is serious, so here's a textbook and here's a bunch of really complicated math equations. We were able to meet the audience where they are. We were able to offer them genuinely entertaining, engaging, enjoyable movies, but about this crucial substance. What did you learn about economics from working on the project? What was the greatest thing that I learned from economics? Um, I think that uh, finally having someone, you know, simply break down how the Federal Reserve actually works and functions was great. I think, uh, 
you know, having somebody very, um, you know, co coherently explain the difference between debt and deficit, I thought was a, was a great uh, piece of this project. But uh, I think the greatest thing that I learned is that there is a way to make it accessible to a large number of people. And I, thought, I think that's what the films do a great job of doing is they basically make it in a way where not only someone like me can understand, but I think that you know, teachers will be able to use these in classrooms. I think that friends will be able to send them to other friends when they're debating about what something truly is. I think there will be, there will be a long tail to these movies that is really exciting in terms of, I think, the information they provide. And how about you? Did you learn anything? I already he, knew, he already knew everything. I already knew everything. He so, knew everything. No, no. I, I think what I learned that was truly valuable was there, there's a whole other level of engaging a broad audience. I mean, I, I work for NPR and the New York Times, and so um, I, I, I have some experience reaching a broad audience of millions of people, but they tend to be a self-selected group who really already want to engage big, complex issues. and. And, um, and so th th this was an exercise for me in reaching an even broader audience, maybe an audience that would find NPR and the New York Times a little boring or a little off-putting, and learning you could really do it. You really can, especially when you do this thing of partnering kind of the, the creative minds behind Anchorman and, and an economics brain <laughs> um, and, and figuring out what can come out on the other side. So what do you think the most common misconception about economics is for the American public? I'd say the single biggest one is that it's some separate thing, that it, that it is uh, s discrete from your day-to-day -day life. I think yeah. economics impacts, it impacts where you live, how you live, who you marry, how many kids you have, what you do for a living, um, how you spend your leisure time, what kind of stuff you have in your house, what you eat. It is embedded intimately in every component of your life. And I certainly don't believe everybody needs to become an economist, but I do think the world will be better off if people do understand that there's this powerful force impacting all of their choices, all of their, uh, everything about their life. I think that's the fundamental misunderstanding. What do you think the biggest challenge facing the U.S. economy is right now? Ooh, you go first. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, well, I think right now we, we are facing a far too sluggish um, uh, recovery from a very deep, deep, deep recession and financial crisis. And um, we uh, don't actually, we're in uncharted territory. So I, I, I think that um, uh, the the way that the government kind of unwinds and, and releases the economy back into the wild after it's been on life support for so long is um, exciting and scary and, and, and really, really important. I think the broader biggest issue, so that's a kind of this year, next year issue. I think the kind of generational issue is what I was talking about earlier. I think we are moving into an age where every American will have to hustle for their living, where the economy is gonna be less forgiving, it's going to offer less. We're each going to have to work harder to establish our value in the marketplace. And um, that might be good for some people. It's definitely bad for some people. But it just is. Yeah, and, and, this, and this, this, is, this is my thought. Is I think the, the hardest thing is how do you prepare kids right now for the future? It's like I have a seven-year-old. And this film series really made me kind of look at what I'm teaching him and what I'm educating him and what he's learning in school is how do you really start to educate kids and prepare them for this hustle? You know, how do you educate them, prepare them for a future where, you know, at one point, you know, everybody's like, computers, that's the answer. You need to know computers and the robots, that's the answer. You need to speak Chinese, that's the answer. So what are the things that we need to be like instilling in our children and preparing them for just so they can not only comprehend but succeed in the future? And I think that these films are a great place to start. So congratulations on the project, and thanks for talking to you interview. Thanks, Eric. Great. Thanks, Eric. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care.